<laughs> yeah. All right. So let's do this if we can. I want to further our discussions. Um, Alan, can you kind of come up and give us, let's move into a panel discussion here. Karen, let me ask if you and Hope, can you come sit up at the table or is that, do we not have the ability to do that? Okay. Um, why don't you, you guys stay with us because I'm going to, I'm going to bring you back in as we time chime into this. Um, let me, let me go straight to Alan Cole, who's the uh, utility section manager for Orange County sure. Utility, since we're here in, in Orlando. Um, what I want to do is, is try to give a county's perspective on the management of tires uh, and have Alan kind of give us a, an overview of, of how they deal with tires, how they deal with regulations at the local level, and then what they do with them. So, Alan, if you could just kind of give us an overview. Thank you, Gene. Um, so, um, a couple of things I wanted to kind of talk about. So, the Orange County Solid Waste Division, we do have a ordinance, a waste tire ordinance, um, Chapter 32, that we basically have that's associated with the county. Um, and um, with that, there's a couple of requirements that's associated with that, such as um, folks that are transporting, they would have to have a manifest, right? And they have to basically provide the details of where the tires are coming from, where they're going, and the amount of quantities and so forth. Um, folks who um, actually transport more than 25 tires, um, they could get like a one-time variance at that point, um, which we would provide to them um, um, during that period. And um, essentially when the tires come to our facilities, um, the current rate that we have at the landfill for the tires is like $170 per ton um, currently. Um, and the tires are deposited to our site. Um, we would um, separate if any tires come in with rims, we would remove the rims from those tires, um, separate the passenger tires, the rims will separate those. We do have a couple of folks on the contract that provides um, service for us. So the tire, the rims that we extract, um, we have a contract with ENH Recycling, and we actually sell those um, materials to them. And um, the tires itself, um, we have a contract with Empire Tires that would come on site and actually um, collect the tires that we have at the facilities. Um, we do, um, they would come either weekly or on an as need basis. Um, where they would come in and, and, and collect the uh, tires. Um, a couple of things you guys mentioned in here, I heard um, Amnesty, Waste Tire Amnesty, the county, our county has um, currently participated in Waste Tire Amnesty. However, our residential um, collection program um, allows for four passenger tires to be collected at a residential property on remote collection days. Um, and when those are delivered to the transfer station, they're sorted out and, and then Hang on. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Okay, perfect. All right, so um, from the, like I mentioned, the residential collection program, we offer um, passenger tires for, to be collected with our large item collection program. Um, and essentially when those are delivered to the transfer station, they're sorted out and then transported to the landfill um, at our waste tire facility. Um, and I don't know how many of the stuff you might've heard when I was talking earlier, but we do have folks on contract that provide service to us when it comes to transporting the tires from the cell. Um, um, we have a contract with Empire Tires and we also have a contract with ENH. Um, recycling that takes all the metals from the um, the tires. Um, throughout the county, um, I've been with the county going on 23 years now. Um, I had the opportunity to work out in the field um, with the collection program, the residential collection program, prior to being in charge of operations. And I know um, for a fact that um, illegal dumping is a major factor um, that the county I'm pretty sure to this day is experiencing when it comes to waste tire. I've, I've found so many of those large piles dumped um, and just, you know, 
the perfect locations um, by some of these folks. So I know that our, even though we have our chapter, um, I know that our code enforcement team is under a lot of pressure to try to address some of these challenges. But I know that illegal dumping for us in the county for waste tire is a major, major factor for us. Alan, what's the, the tip fee that the county charges? Um, the current tip fee is $170 per ton for the, for the tires. And if somebody brings in on an, on an individual basis, uh, I'm assuming they can bring in what, up to four? At the yeah, they can, um, they can bring in, um, um, yeah, they can bring in, the small, as long as it's on the 25, um, they can bring into the landfill and they'll be charged per ton. If you're transporting more than 25 tires, then you're going to need to have a manifest. And you get a one-time variance from the county at that point. Okay. Um, question for, for Hope then. Is that, uh, from what you've heard, is that pretty much what's going around the state? Is there any variances from a community to community? Um, I'm sorry, what was the question again? Uh, the question is, if, if from a, an overall state's perspective, is what Orange County facing similar to what is going around, what's happening around the state? Yes, um, most of the counties have dumping sites. So right now we currently have five sites um, that we are trying to clean up. They, they have over 15,000 tires on site. Um, so what we're trying to, that's why we're trying to do these amnesty events is so we can keep these tires from being dumped on, you know, out in the woods or whatever. So all counties qualify for the amnesty events? Yes, all counties, anybody can apply, you know, apply to get an amnesty event done because like I said, we do offer up to $25,000 reimbursement to the county to do these events. Okay, and then those funds are coming from the Solid Waste Management Trust Fund, correct? Yes. All right, so a little bit for those of you in the room that may or may not know about it, the Solid Waste Management Trust Fund here in the state of Florida is funded solely from tire fee generated when you go buy a new tire. Is it a buck or a buck 50 now? $2. It's $2? All right, so it's $2 per tire for every new tire sold goes in the Solid Waste Management Trust Fund. That generates in the neighborhood of 22 to $23 million every year. Um, of which the last thing that I saw related to tires was a transfer to Department of Agriculture for around $2 million to deal with mosquitoes. There's a nexus between tires and mosquitoes. Then there's uh, another pot of money. It's around $2 million, something like that, that goes for Osborne Reef. You saw the slides that Terry showed earlier of the, uh, the, the reef that was dumped offshore on the East Coast. Um, and then I think there's another 500,000 just in tire abatement. So the bulk of that money goes beyond and funds solid waste management here in the state of Florida, which is greatly needed, right? So otherwise we'd have to pull it out of general revenue. Okay. But I still think there's some funds that, we, that uh, individuals might be able to go after. Um, and we can get into that discussion later about maybe lobbying the legislature to do something related to market development for tires or to uh, increase, to bring in some of these folks that you saw and heard John mention, whether it's Goodyear or, or somebody else that might want to do a paralysis system in the state. There's money there. It's just a matter of how you convince the legislators to go after it. Um, why don't we open it up to Q&A from audience? So let me start with in person. Uh, do we have any questions? in-house here. And I'm going to walk around the room because I want to capture this with the mic. Harry. Good evening. The state collects almost a billion and a half on tire fees, but yet nobody in Department of Environmental can give account where does that money go. For many years, I tried to get grants to buy shredder and land to do tire recycling. They only have uh, in the in the, in the Tilly Bank for that two hundred thousand, and they cannot even give a hundred thousand grant to buy a shredder. Where is that all that money going? The governor office cannot give an answer. DEP cannot give an answer. All the officers working in DEP, they switch you from one person to another, and nobody cannot give an answer. Where is that going to? Let so, me, go ahead. You want me? Enter it, Karen. 
Well, I was going to say Jean answered quite a bit yeah. of that just a minute ago. If you if you listen, right? If you listen to what he said, send us send us an email, and we can give you a breakdown of exactly where every dime of that money is going. It is earmarked for specific projects. The legislature gives us direction on how we can use that funding. So we just can't say, you know, someone comes in with a great project and they say, you know, we can use this for a tire shredder. We think it's wonderful, but we can't give you that money. We're not allowed per the legislature to give or provide you that funding. Again, it's very specifically earmarked on what that funding can be used for. But again, for a specific breakdown of that funding, send us an email and we can send you back. If you have Hope's um, email address from earlier, if you don't, um, get it from her or come get my email address and we'll we'll get you that information. Yeah, let me follow back up on that because um, I do an analysis of the Solid Waste Man Trust Fund every year. I can tell you exactly where it is, is going. So, um, and it, it's not a billion. It's 20 million, you know, 20 to 22 million a year. Um, so it's not that high. And then in terms of the, the grant fundings, we used to have something called innovative grants here in the state of Florida, which was geared out about $8 million a year that went through the counties that private industry could partner with. Those funds are no longer available. Um, the legislature did away with it. So if, if you want grant funds from the state, it's not the department. They don't have the ability to do that. You have to start at the legislative process and have it come down to tell the department to do grants. So the DP is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Jane, can I offer a comment? Yes, please. Um, from doing the market analysis, the state does not have a problem with tire processing capacity. They have plenty of capacity in the state to, to process. It would be hard to justify put spending public funds to uh, create additional processing capacity in competition with those who use their own money to do it. Uh, but we don't have a problem in the state with processing capacity right now. The problem is in mar the problem is in markets and not in processing capability. So to, to that point, perhaps getting DOT on board with using more asphalt rubber in the state would be something that uh, we could highlight and try to get the legislature to work with. There are a number of things that could be done. And uh, I even have some slides if you want uh, to go into it, talking about some market development things. But I think we ought to go with questions and, and uh, you just use those if we have time. Well, and, and just to follow up on the... Um... FDOT uh, using rubber modified asphalt, you know, certainly again, it's one of those areas that if you are in the, the industry, um, we need to get them involved in the conversation. And, and I would highly encourage that be one of the next steps, not just from the Department of Environmental Protection, which we have had these conversations in the past, but it was my understanding that the road construction industry has worked with FTOT and said that the, the wet process with RMA was um, very expensive and, and hard to manage. And so that's why they moved away from it. So again, it, it's not just working with FDOT, it's working with the road construction industry to work with them to adapt, to pilot into maybe the dry um, RMA aspect, but they need to be at the table as well. Terry, those you... are, yeah, those are really good. Those are really good uh, comments. You know, back in the beginning, when uh, DOT specified uh, rubber modified asphalt, that was a cooperative effort between DEP and DOT. As a matter of fact, DEP gave DOT a hundred thousand dollars a year for a number of years to monitor the performance of those roads. It was part of the cooperation between them and it's been very strong. Um, I would hope that uh, some of the fundamentals of that would be there to allow DOT to start looking at some of these dry process materials that take care of some of the terminal blending limitations. I think that would be the, uh, the approach and hopefully it would get a good ear at DOT. All right, uh, Lauren, we see your comment. So uh, Lauren, who is with the department, uh, referenced the uses of uh, waste tires from Solid Waste Management Trust Fund are authorized by statute. And there's the statute. Um, all right, other questions? In person, otherwise we're gonna turn it over to Q&A from the virtual attendees. 
Manuel says, if we want to get scrap tires from landfill or public dumping sites for utilization, how do we go about that? So how does a private individual that might want tires work with a community? Uh, Alan, let me start with you. Do you make tires available, waste tires available? And actually, is that even allowable at this point? And another follow-up question for Hope. Okay, I'm good. All right, so um, unfortunately, no. Um, materials that are delivered to the landfill is not extracted from the landfill. So folks can just come to the site and request um, tires from the site. So unfortunately, we don't, we don't make that readily available for folks. All right, and then I know what, another question that came up, and Emmanuel, I think you asked this question earlier in chat, is the export market. So um, let's say somebody, and Phil, I don't know if you're still on with us, for somebody that uh, processes tires, what is the export market for waste tires? And Phil, if you're not on, perhaps uh, John and Terry, you can comment on that. I, I am on, Gene. I, I'm not aware of a, a lot of export activity out of Florida currently. Um, a number of years ago, there were a lot of tires being, whole tires being bailed and um, sent to Vietnam. And <clears throat> that um, has since stopped. I have heard of some activity, um, whole tires being shipped to India, but I've not seen a lot of it evidence to that effect. I, actually, I, I don't know of any example that I could point to where it's being done today out of Florida. I think that there are markets out of California. I'm not real familiar with those. Probably Terry or uh, John would be better to address those. And um, I believe those are more for a shredded product. Well, at one point some years ago, after the tires that really were going to China through Vietnam, um, there were some others who started to do bale tires and said they were sending them to India. And uh, that was suspicious from the beginning and it got more suspicious when those containers were sent back to Port Everglades, uh, still full and gave back those tires. So on the uh, schemes going from the East Coast to India, there's at least a, something that needs to be, you need to be very careful with those. Make sure that they're contracts and they're not going to come back. Yeah, I would sure agree you. with all this. The exporting off the West Coast is two inch chips to Japan in Korea um, for energy production based on long term contracts. So very solid, very consistent markets on the West Coast. And I'm not aware of any on the East Coast. There's a, a question from Max Lee. Does DEP or other publicly available source make annual projections for the tire supply and demand? And Max, I'm assuming you mean that for Florida or uh, let's start off with Florida. So I know at one point, Terry, I think you actually did it for the department. There was an annual report. Um, what's the status of that? Where are we? Is there a current state of, of tire information for the state at this time? Yeah, well, we, we did one fairly frequently, not quite every year, but we did it very frequently up until 2015. And since then, uh, due, a, due to a combination of things within the state and things in my business, uh, we haven't done it as frequently. But uh, I'm probably about 80% through doing uh, the current uh, state of the state, SOS analysis of both generation and use of the tires within the state. And the people, the processors within the state, uh, like Phil, are very cooperative in providing information and helping me understand. I contact over 80 people in the process of doing that analysis. And uh, hopefully within uh, a reasonable period of time, you'll see an updated version of that. That's what I was referring to in my presentation, talking about where I think it is, but it's not, not completed. Yeah, as, as a follow-up to that, we tried to help identify where the tire processors in the state. So we've got, uh, we run an um, online service called WasteMap, wastemap.org. 
So if you want to see where those facilities are, as well as landfills, waste energy facilities, um, you can pull up wastemap.org and then click on the uh, toggle the, the, the particular uh, waste item, whether it's a waste tire processor or whatever, and it will populate on that map. And then you can click on each individual facility and get facility contact information from that. And I think the department also has those sites on the GIS system, if I'm not yes, correct. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But I go, I go beyond that uh, with them. And I, I uh, try to talk not just to processors. Uh, I talk to the landfills. I, uh, I talk to the end users. Um, I try to have two data points, two verifications of each data point that I use in that analysis. It, it ends up being the most complex of the studies I do, and I do them for a number of states. Yeah, and you mentioned the, the landfills. I actually spoke to uh, Solid Waste Authority. So there, we've got, what, 13 waste energy facilities? Maybe not even that many right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, eight. all right. So for those facilities, they can burn tires in their facilities. Um, I know SWA has a cap. I think it's like 13%. It's, it's actually uh, 2%. It's actually 2%. 2%. Okay. Right. Um, so they do have a limit on the amount of, of tires that they can burn uh, in their facilities. Karen, you have a But it's a very useful material for them to help uh, maintain combustion conditions, optimize combustion conditions, but it does take away capacity, solid waste capacity, because uh, their heat gener uh, generated limited, and the tires have uh, three times the uh, uh, heat content per pound that MSW has, municipal solid waste has. So John, hey, this is Karen. I have a question for you in regards to the, the previous question. Um, you said that you guys do get the number of tire generation from scrap um, through the replacements and the scrap tire data. Can you guys get down in the numbers to, um, I guess, as detailed specifically to state level for those numbers? We cannot. Um, we've looked into that in the past, and at this point, we don't have that granularity in the data. Thank you. All right, there's Manuel who had a question in reference to how does a private processor facility get access to uh, I guess, dump sites or waste sites. So, uh, Alan, do you put out to bid? How does the county deal with selecting a waste tire processor? Maybe Hope can follow up that too. Um, yes, yes, Jane. We would actually do solicitation. So for Empire to come on to our, um, as a vendor for a contract with us, we would solicit it. Okay, that's so how there's go a the process. certain not... period when that, that goes up for renewal. So you do an RFP. Correct. Yeah. So we have, usually we would have a contract with a one year and then four annually, uh, four year renewal options. Um, so usually a five year contract. So I want to say that we're probably on our fourth year now. So I was think that we'll probably be going back out to, to bid um, pretty soon. Okay. I would suggest that um, any particular um, private companies that are out there would actually try to get themselves registered with the county um, so that when they do put an, an IFB out, they would actually list potential vendors that they would actually would want to contact to inform them that this solicitation is, is out okay. on the street. And that's probably synonymous around the, around the state. What about the department? Does the department have a, a contract list for uh, tire processors that the department works with. Um, so if we have a site that needs to be cleaned up, we will have to, if it's over um, a certain amount of tires, we have to try and use our processors that are on contract. But if it's under a certain amount of tires, we can go through the vendor bid system and put out the, you know, for a bid and have personal waste tire collectors that will try and clean up the site. Okay, Manuel, I hope that answers your questions related to, to how to get access to some of these tires. Um, let's see here. There was another... Go back to that one. Hang on right there, Tim. Um, does DEP or other or others have educational programs for local law enforcement regarding enforcement, responsibilities, potential penalties, 
vehicle seizure, uh, seizure under uh, Florida litter law that might help address illegal dumping. So I guess that's a question related to illegal dumping and what type of educational programs might be out there. And I guess that could be from the state level as well as the county level. So we do have um, FDEP law enforcement uh, who does um, go out to illegal dump sites and um, they work with the department on enforcement with the districts, um, consent orders with the districts on cleanups. As far as the educational aspects, um, we do not have an educational campaign around waste tires. I know that Keep Florida Beautiful and maybe some of the local affiliates um, may have information around, especially around tire dumping or tire litter. Um, I'd have to verify that, but um, currently we, we do not have anything on, on education for waste tires. Alan, how about you, county level? I am not aware of any kind of educational information that's out there regarding waste tire. Um, I do remember um, with code enforcement back many years ago, um, they used to have a couple of officers that worked in conjunction with code enforcement um, that they were basically more or less um, waste tire officers, basically. And they would identify and find those legal dumping and do their investigation regarding that. But I don't think that that exists anymore with our code enforcement de department, as far as I'm aware. So there is a state, uh, South Carolina, I know they do have a pretty robust waste tire education campaign. Um, I would just uh, Google, you know, do a web search for South Carolina waste tire education. And, and again, I, I think it'll be very applicable to, to what we're trying to do here in the state as well. All right, let's nope. jump. Phil, you've got your hand up. Can you turn your mic on? I know you have a, either a question or comment. Yeah, actually, I had a question. Um, someone referenced that the, um, they are current, the retailer is currently collecting $2 a tire at the time of a sale that goes to the state and into the waste tire solid waste management fund. I was unaware of that. I was unaware that it had been increased from $1. And if the fund is receiving about $20 million a year, that's consistent with $1, not 2 so I was just curious if you could clarify, if someone on the panel could clarify that. I'm gonna to have to look at it, Phil. I think DEP is is nodding their heads on that as well to run the numbers. Um, I will get the, the current number for everybody in this room and it's on this call and make sure you all get it. Uh, Jeff, you have a comment. Uh, Lauren uh, Jeff from DEP. So Lauren O'Connor had responded in the chat, confirming it's still a dollar. It's still a dollar. Thank you. All right. So larger for truck tires, evidently. Okay. Well, I will verify it for everybody uh, and get it out. So uh, still a dollar, which goes back to fill that where that 22 to $23 million. All right. We got another question from in-person attendee. Just a quick question from a solid waste facilities point of view. How long do you actually have once the tires arrive on your site? to actually process them? Um, because we mentioned, or we heard earlier that there was a connection between mosquitoes and tires. And as we know, it is market-based. How long do they actually have once it's coming in through the gate to be processed or to go outside the facility? Well, we'll have to check into that if we get back with you on that one, unless Lauren knows. <laughs> Lauren, do you know? We we'll see you in there. Uh, I think it's dependent on uh, the conditions of a contract. I think they're each different um, based on their facility design and capacity. Okay. So, Lauren, is it via the permit? What the permit may say on the processing side? Yes, Karen. I believe that's correct. Okay. I recall seeing something in statute saying that if you have more than 1,500, something in there about you had to clear out every year. I 
Uh, for facilities, they can't have anything over 1500. So what we try to tell them is keep it low, you know, don't ever go over 1500 tires because um, it once you get that high, it's hard to keep them processed and get them out. So we try to keep them on a lower level. And is there any requirements at this point? Um, I know, Terry, you had shown the slide of I believe it was Polk County where you're separating out the tires into little mini piles. Um, is there any requirements on the books that the anybody that is collecting tires, if they're over that 1500 level, that they do source separated piles or can they just pile them all up? Well, the piling inside, you know, putting them in small piles is primarily for uh, um, fire for fire control uh, aspects, not Having them in small piles still allows them to continue to collect water, and the water then breeds mosquitoes. There have been times when Florida and the country have had real issues with West Nile or, to a lesser degree, Eastern Equine Encephalitis Triple E. And during those times, we tried to, uh, the state tried to have the tires either be covered so that they didn't accumulate water or be processed to minimize. Um, the ability to accumulate water. I don't believe that the state has any current problem with that. And so I don't think that that's uh, being in, you know, it's less critical at this stage. Quick question on the landfilling of tires. Um, can a county landfill tires, I'm assuming not all, but can they cut them up and landfill them? And if they can cut them up, what size did they have to be cut up at? Hope, oh, question for you. I'm not very good being put on the spot, as you can see. <laughs> um, the, at the landfill, they have to be cut up into four, eight. 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 Okay. All right, any other questions from in-person attendees? We've got a question on the screen. Uh, this is from Max Lee. Is the 1500 tire storage threshold applicable to cement plants that typically burn 100 to 500 tires per hour? So that actually, I think that it's not really a threshold, uh, Max. I think that is the permit requirement, right? So you are then a tire processor for 1500 or more. So there's not, there's not a limit. It's just that's when the, the permit threshold kicks in. Correct. Can we revise the permit limit? I'm not. Yeah. So, so just to break it up, we have the solid waste regulatory side who provides the permitting and the permits on site. And then we have the registration side, which is where hope sits. So it, it's kind of a, a divide. So when we start getting into true permitting questions, we probably need to, to write those down and send them over to our solid waste or our district offices on those sides. Uh, all right, Rodrigo, you have your hand up. Thank you, Tim. Want to turn your mic on? Yeah, and um, we have tremendous processing capacity at, at our South Florida plant. I understand it's very far away from, from some of the markets where it's generated Orlando and uh, Tampa area as well. So can, what can be done in terms to make it economically feasible to move the material to the to the to the to the these disposal centers or the cement plants in South Florida. We still have triple or can triple our capacity of processing capacity of tires if we can get the tires down there. Rodrigo, to that point, um, let me ask this is does the cement industry in particular tighten? Do you all charge a tip fee to take in tires? So well, let me ask that question first on whole tires, and then let me ask if somebody were to process, how does that, that model work? No, we don't charge for tires. We charge for some other ways, but not for tires, as long as comments in the specs that I mentioned before. And for us to, to, to John comment before about the wires, because our conveying system is pneumatic, we cannot take the wire because it tangles in the, in the pipes and, and, and make a problem. For us, on a particular process, it would have a mechanical feeding system. That would be another story. Yes, the wire can 
barely supplement some uh, some iron in the mix but for us particularly is a uh, is wire free or very clean cut which cannot be is easily warranty in the in the in the tdf okay john you have your hand up to uh thank you very much i just wanted to respond to the uh discussion of education surrounding illegal dumping both uh texas in California have extensive illegal dumping uh, education and deterrence programs. Uh, California's is uh, very successful. Texas is uh, struggling because they have a, a lot of illegal dumping out in the, uh, the west of Texas. South Carolina also has a program called See It, Report It, where uh, citizens and interested people are encouraged to report illegal dumping to a central state uh, location, to a central state uh, contact through this program so that it can be very quickly addressed. And I understand this has been pretty successful in South Carolina as well. Uh, I, I know that illegal dumping is something that counties across the country struggle with, uh, wealthy counties, especially uh, disadvantaged counties. And uh, it's something that you really need to stay on top of. Fortunately, Florida has some pretty strong laws, um, but the enforcement of those laws is really what counts. Thanks. All right, any other questions? Either from our virtual attendees or our in-person. All right, Karen. So this is for everyone, um, including the panel. So outside of government assistance, what can be done in the state of Florida to further market development? So are there ways that we could partner with industry? And, and John, I'm thinking of you right now. Um, are there ways we can partner with U.S. tire manufacturers? Are there um, producers or manu tire manufacturers who, who may want to come into Florida and have partnerships or pilot programs with some of our local governments. What are what are some ways we can can start to advance market development outside again the push um, of government grants or mandates? Well, I think first and foremost, and I'll I'll take the question to start it off, but I know other panelists have uh, good insight on this as well. A lot of historical experience um, working with the Department of Transportation to get a specification for rubber modified asphalt and open that door, um, which would then potentially enable the use of uh, Inflation Reduction Act monies and uh, Infrastructure uh, Investment and Job Act monies uh, would be one way. Um, it, it takes effort to write, it, write and implement a new specification, but fortunately some neighboring states like Georgia have uh, you know, opened the door and uh, I think that would be a great starting point for uh, a state like Florida to uh, write the entire suite of specifications that make up rubber modified asphalt. Uh, an analogous situation is South Carolina, which is right now writing a specification for a rubber modified, rubber modified asphalt application called a SAMI, a stress absorbing membrane interliner, which goes between um, a broken up asphalt surface and an, uh, a thin overlay. So the road's gonna be rehabilitated with a thin overlay. You put a stress absorbing membrane interliner in between. The, they're now writing the specifications for that application in that state. Unfortunately, every state has its own road specifications. And this means every state needs a suite of rubber modified asphalt specs that cover the processes appropriate to that state. So. The, the first thing I would do is start working with DOT to get those doors open. And there further may be monies available to help write those specifications. Uh, John, you mentioned the infrastructure grant. Uh, those grants typically, or the, the three criteria, or three sets of, of money that's coming up, which is a big pot of money that the federal government is releasing over a set period of years. 
um, typically I think addresses MSW, right? And so then the question comes to fold, are waste tires classified as MSW? And Karen is shaking her head. So yes. So at that point, then a community could go after funds for a waste tire project um, to do something from an infrastructure development standpoint. And I think, I don't know if EPA is really going to do this or not, but I think there was discussion about opening that up for industry to bid or is it i think are they leaning more towards having that go through the states and local governments all right so karen just answered local governments harry one thing i don't hear nobody say is about funding for training of under uh, should i say uh people released from prison i get a hard time to get a job there are many products are being made from rubber products and that can create multiple jobs in multiple areas that's something that the government need to help, uh, whether nonprofit organization or uh, other industries to help train people. And I can bring in some of that. As part of the infrastructure grant, Harry, to your point, there is uh, a particular set, I think it's $40 million just tied into environmental justice issues and grant and training for uh, uh, low income communities uh, available to that. Yeah. All right. If there are no other questions, um, I'm going to ask everybody to give a round of applause for our panelists up here now. Um, I certainly have got to thank John, uh, Terry, Rodrigo, Phil for their involvement. Um, Alan, thank you for, for driving and participating with us. Hope and Karen, thank you for allowing me to bring you up here and drag you up here and put you in front of everybody. Um, that concludes our workshop. Just as a reminder, I will make all the presentations available to everybody. You're going to get an email from me, um, which I apologize. I sent so many emails out to all the conferences we event. So you will get an email from me along with, I uh, will take the recordings today and I'll, I'll have you to put them up on our YouTube channel. So with that, thank you. That concludes for those of you in the room that are going to stick around for the next workshop. We are gonna have lunch available in the next room. Again, it's $15 per person if you wanna stick around and join us. And with that, thank you.